Good morrow, nerds! This week on the LARP House, we are going to show you how to sew and silkscreen your very own basic tabard. Tabards are a tunic-like garment that you wear over a shirt or armor. Whether you're a player or a game designer, tabards are an extremely useful and easy way to signify different factions within the game. So, whether you're making one tabard for your chivalrous knight NPC or ten tabards for your mercenary company of NPCs, this tutorial is for you. Let's get going! What is up, nerds? I am here this week with Allison, and she is my sewing navigator. We are going to show you how to sew and silkscreen a basic tabard. So let's talk about materials. Right, so it's going to be pretty straightforward. You're going to need some cotton cloth. Um, just measure uh, from the tip of your shoulder down to whatever length you want the tabard to be, and buy double that amount of the fabric uh, for mm -hmm. length. You're also going to need uh, bias tape, which can be bought with single fold or double fold. We're going to be using single fold. Double fold works just as well, it doesn't really matter either way. You could do something in the same color or a contrasting color. Using it as a contrasting color will serve as both a hem and a trim. So doing it uh, with the same color is going to kind of blend in, so it'll just be hemming it. Uh, you'll need pins. Please pin everything you do. It'll make things so much straighter and easier to do. Thread the same color as the fabric you're going to be using, and scissors to cut with. Uh, preferably fabric scissors, but any old scissors will do as well. Alright, so as you can see here, we've folded the fabric in half, and it's double thickness, so that'll be extra sturdy. It's probably going to be in the field of battle, so we want to make sure it holds up. Now, from here, we're going to start by marking where the neck is. So on the folded edge, I'm going to fold again, make sure everything's even, and then slight curve where you want the half of the neck to be, since we're doing this in halves. This will be the direct middle of the neck, which is on the center fold, so that we're cutting twice, the end of the neck will be about uh, depending on your measurements, an uh, inch to two inches in, so you got you have enough room to hang off the shoulder. Now this is probably going to be going over chainmail or other garb, so the neck does need to be somewhat larger. Doesn't have to be particularly. Big. We're going to do this in a V-neck shape, so about an approximate kind of triangle mark where you want the base of the neck to be. This actually helps when you're putting on, the next to be a lot easier to put on. So right now you have basically an obtuse triangle marker here. And if you want to pin, use more pins, you can. If you don't want to, that's okay too. But we're basically going to cut from the gold pin that you're seeing here to the purple one in a straight line. Gently pulling on the fabric will keep it taut. Once you get to the pin, remove it. Do not cut over the pin. And gently curve up. Now you have a wide neck to pull over any heavy garb, as well as giving a deep V. So you have something like that. Alright, so from here, we're going to start with the bias tape. We're going to be using this more as a trim, so just get a good length of it going. underneath and allow it to fold over. Don't pin the uh, two edges of the tabard together so otherwise you're going to sew it shut and you'll be able to get it on very well. And putting things on a diagonal does help as well. So now we actually get to do the sewing part. So uh, depending on the setting of your machine you'll just want it on uh, normal tension and you're going to be using a zigzag stitch. Uh, I, it's preferable to a straight stitch as it's going to actually anchor down both the uh, bias tape as well as the double layered fabric. And it looks a little nicer too. I'll actually have a slight like diamond pattern going in and out of the, uh, the two different materials. It'll look really cool when it's done. Uh, 
thread should be threaded through, bobbin of the same type, uh, and away we go. Here's what you will need to silk screen your tabard. Contact paper, large clamps, a self-healing cutting mat, the speedball silk screening kit, which we will link to in the description, silk screen ink in whatever color you require, an exacto blade, a sharpie, scissors, and scotch tape in case you fuck up your stencil like I did. A drawing board, but you can really just use any flat board. So what I've done here is I've drawn my stencil, I've folded my computer paper in half and drawn it and then cut it out just like making a snowflake. So I'm just taking a pair of scissors and cutting out my design and that leaves me with a stencil in the computer paper. Once you're happy with your stencil, take out a sheet of contact paper and tape it to the cutting mat. You want to cut out your contact paper to be larger than your design, just in case. Then take the stencil and tape it along the edges. You really don't want it to move around while you're drawing. And then we're going to go along our edges with a sharpie. Try not to move the paper while you're drawing. And now you have your design drawn on the contact paper. Next we need to remove our stencil from our contact paper. I'm going to trace my X-Acto knife over the design lightly on the outside of the sharpie edges. You want to draw lightly first and then go back over it with a, with a harder cut because that gives you more control and you're less likely to cut into your design and make mistakes. It's a good idea if you have multiple parts like this to label them like I did. And now we're just placing our contact paper on the silk screen board, making sure that we've got it all lined up. Once you're happy with the positioning of your stencil, you just remove the back like a sticker and stick them onto the screen. My cutting mat has a grid on it and because silk screens are transparent I can still see the grid so I am using the grid to line up my segments. You want to make sure that at least the bottom edge is straight. Make sure that the edges of your contact paper are really secured well because if they're not then the filler might blot and we really don't want that. That'll create spots in the silk screen. So the setup I have here is I have taken two chairs and spaced them out so that the silk screen rests and there is a hollow space underneath it and I've just clamped it down and then I've set a piece of paper on the floor underneath it to catch any filler that drips. What I've done off screen is created a watertight seal with masking tape around the design. This keeps silkscreen ink from going freaking everywhere. It's time to add the filler. You want to make sure that you shake or stir the filler before you start putting it on your screen. There's no rhyme or reason, you just pour the filler and just use the squeegee to evenly smooth it out. You really want to go lightly with the squeegee. If you press too hard, you could disrupt the adhesion of the contact paper and that would ruin literally everything. It's okay to go over it multiple times, but you know, control yourself. Don't go over it too many times, otherwise the contact paper, again, might come up and you'll have a bad time. And now we wait for the filler to dry. Now that it's dry, I'm gonna take an X-Acto knife and use it to lift the contact paper off the screen. You want to be really careful not to accidentally chip away any filler. Looks pretty good, so now we're going to set it up on the tabard. I've taken the drawing board and I've put it on top of the two chairs that I had set up earlier. Clamp it down in as many places as you can. So after that, you get your silk screen ink out and a tongue depressor and begin to put it on your screen. It's good with silk screen ink to pour on just a little bit more than you think you'll need. And just be really sure to cover the entire design multiple times with the squeegee. And you can press pretty hard when you're doing this. So as soon as you're done with that, you want to take the clamps off and separate your silk screen from your tabard. 
It's beautiful. If you look closely, there are two little splotches of ink in the upper right hand corner. In order to get rid of those, I'm going to take a wet cloth and wipe it away while the ink is still wet. Then clean my silk screen off and take a brush and paint the holes with filler to avoid this problem in the future. In general, it's important to clean your silk screen of ink after each use to avoid having the ink drying on the screen. There you go, my dudes. Now you have a beautiful tabard of your very own so that your girlfriends know which club you're in. <laughs> Tune in next week for a brief history of LARP. Don't forget to check out our Etsy store and our Patreon page because we really do depend on you guys. <laughs> we are also on Twitter, Tumblr, and Facebook. Remember, like us, subscribe to us, fight with us. The hairs of my arm. Oh, I don't right. Oh, that would be unfortunate. Is that better?